Okay, this is part two in two different videos where I'm dealing with composite functions and their domain. Alright, so if you didn't watch part one, it might be helpful because jumping here in the middle of this might be a little confusing going through this example. Alright, so um, I'm just going to work out uh, one example here. We're going to do two things. We're going to find both the composite function and we're going to find its domain. Okay, so um, in this example, let's say that we are given a function f of x is equal to 1 over x plus 4 and our g of x function is 8 over x minus 1. Alright, they are asking us to find the composite function and then they're going to ask us to find its domain. Alright, so let's uh, find the composite uh, function first. Alright, now uh, if you've been working with composite functions, hopefully you recall that um, the composite function here alright, we can write maybe in a little better notation or easier to understand as f of g of x. That's probably my uh, preference right here. All right, because then this clearly tells me that I'm going to take g of x. I'm going to take this g of x function and I'm going to put it inside my f function. All right, so that's kind of why I like that notation more than this original notation. All right, so my g function right here is 8 over x minus 1. All right, so I'm going to take it and I'm going to put it in my f function. All right, so let's do... Um, some nice notation here. So f of 8 over x minus 1. All right, I'm going to put it into the f function everywhere where there is an x and there's only one there. All right, so it's going to be 1 over and then I'm going to replace the x with what that g function is. So 8 over x minus 1. All right, and then plus 4. All right, now what I have done now is I've created a complex fraction. And that's okay because you should have a skill um, in your repertoire where you uh, can multiply through by the least common denominator to get rid of that uh, complex fraction. Okay, so least common denominator would be x minus 1. All right, so I'm going to take that top and I'm going to multiply it by x minus 1. I'm going to take this bottom and I'm also going to multiply by x minus 1. Okay, and that is my least common denominator. Okay, it's a very um, nice shortcut here for getting us to simplify this. All right, so in my numerator, then 1 times x minus 1, which is just going to give me an x minus 1. All right, now here I've got to distribute that x minus 1, multiplying these two things for that first set of distributives. The x minus 1s would cross out, which is what we want. We want that fraction to go away, which would leave me with just an 8. All right, and then multiplying here on a second distributive, then I would have a 4 times that x minus 1. All right, let's make that a little bit bigger there. Okay, now simplifying a little bit farther here, you're going to have an x minus 1 in your top. If I go ahead and distribute that, all right, let's go ahead and show all the steps. x plus 4x minus 4, all right, and now I can do 8 minus 4, which will give me an x minus 1 on top and a 4x plus 4. All right, so there is my composite function for the first thing that they told me to do. All right, now for the second part, it says find its domain. All right, so let's identify what we're doing here. We're going to be finding the domain. Okay, now if you remember from, or if you watched part one of the video on finding composite functions, you're going to remember that this takes three steps. Okay, so I'm going to identify each of the three steps. All right, so step one. All right, you need to be able to find the domain of the inside function. So I'm going to put just domain inside. Okay, so we're going to take a look at this. Our inside function is going to be the g of x. All right, the g of x function is a rational function. And the way you find the domain of a rational function, you set that denominator equal to 0. Those become your exclusions. So I'm going to do x minus 1, set it equal to 0, solve. I get x. Um, cannot equal 1 because that turns out to be an exclusion. If I have x equal 1, that gives me a denominator of 0, which we cannot have. Okay, so x cannot equal 1. That's my exclusion of my domain from my inside function. Okay, and then step 2, we need to take a look at the domain of the outside function, and the outside function is going to be the f function. So let's write domain outside Okay, just generically there for the outside function. All right, again, by coincidence, I have another rational function. Rational functions, the way you find domains, set that denominator equal to 0. All right, so x plus 4 equals 0. Subtract 4 from both sides. x cannot equal negative 4. Okay, so then again, it's an exclusion 
all right, for the domain of that outside function. Okay, and then step three, we are going to want to solve an equation to find some more exclusions here. So we are going to want to solve whatever our inside function is set equal to the domain of the outside function. And then there again will be our last exclusion that we have to deal with. All right, so you take the inside function, you set it equal to the domain of the outside function. All right, solve that equation, and that's going to be another exclusion. All right, so my inside function is 8 over x minus 1. I want to set that equal to the domain of my outside function. Domain of my outside function is that negative 4. All right, solve the equation for x. Okay, so a little bit of algebra here. Multiply both sides by that x minus 1. Negative 4 x minus 1. All right, do some distributive property. Just a lot of algebra to solve this. Negative times negative should make that a positive. Subtract 4 from both sides. All right, so here x cannot equal negative 1. Okay, so then there's that exclusion right there for that. Okay, now for our composite function, you've got to remember what parts you need to exclude from that final domain of the composite function. You are going to want to exclude whatever your domain of the inside function is. You're going to want to ex um, exclude whatever you solve for when you set the inside function equal to the domain of your outside function. So again, this turns out to be excluding negative 1 and 1. All right, most of the time we'll write our final answer then in interval notation. All right, so my domain of that composite function of f of g of x is going to look like negative infinity to negative 1, negative 1 to 1, and then 1 to positive infinity. Okay, so the two main parts to this question, they asked me to find the composite function, they asked me to find the domain of that composite function. All right, so just one little nice example, um, and a follow-up from part one. It really would have helped if you watched part one, all right, to be able to summarize and put all this together for your composite functions. Um, if you like the video, go ahead and give me a like on that, and, and consider uh, subscribing to this, the channel. I'd really appreciate it. Thanks.